Hey, thanks for joining me. So uh, as I've, I've mentioned a couple of times in recent videos, uh, I recently had a viewer of the channel send me a box of comics, a bunch of random stuff that was inside it. And there was a lot of stuff in there I've never seen before. And this is one of them. And the name on the cover is what caught my eye. I have heard of Richard Corbin. The name is not unfamiliar, but I know nothing about him. Absolutely nothing. The only thing that I have any kind of knowledge on comes from the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. They would talk about him. I think he did some work on the turtles that they were really excited about. And from what I understand, the guy's got a had a long kind of career doing all kinds of stuff that was just supposed to be artistically just fascinatingly interesting and just revered in the artist community. So I, I have no like background with with his work outside of this is like the first time I've ever seen anything that he has done that I'm aware of. So it, you know, I, I, it's kind of like a, I mean, I flipped through this. I, I've, I've looked through this, but this is really my first kind of take on his work. So, you know, take it, everything I've got to say with a grain of salt. I don't have any context for his work, but just looking at it objectively from an artistic perspective, I'm not interested in the, the story. I, I haven't read this thing. I'm just kind of was flipping through it for the artwork. Um, so, you know, one of the things I think is kind of important. I mean, I can't read what that says. Fan, Fanta, Fantagore Press, I guess. You should make your thing legible and readable. I guess it's issue six. And then what is the title of this? Is that D-E-O, D-E-P? I believe it's supposed to be Den, D-E-N. And, and, you know, I don't mind artwork kind of covering up the the title of the thing, but make the title smaller. Like, I, you can't even read it. Like, you come in, like, I need that issue of uh, 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 Dio, Dep, whatever. So there's some kind of, like, failing going on here. I think this was made in, well, we'll see when it was made. This is a kind of an older comic, honestly. Um, 89. So, I mean, I was 12 years old when this came out. So saying all that, you know, looking at this with a kind of a grain of salt kind of perspective of when it was made, but artistically, this cover, it's what the, the little that I've known about Richard Corbin when I started kind of paying attention after people started talking about his work, I started looking at it whenever I'd hear the name, I'd kind of glance at it and kind of pay a little bit more attention. And there's something just undeniably eye-catching about his work. And this cover is certainly that, this crazy figure work, this look on his face, this weird creature, the coloring, the, the colors used here. And however he does his work, is it, is it painted? Is it airbrushed? Is it, I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm sure there's plenty of you that will be watching this, at least some of you that will know what this, what his techniques are. But as a cover piece, I mean, it's kind of weird. It's like he's smacking this monster creature with this torch. There's not a lot of energy to what's going on there. It's not that well done as far as energy and movement. It's it, I'm, I'm not too impressed with it in that respect, but the rendering, the, the anatomy, the coloring, the shadows, the lighting, the textures... That is all something that's interesting that's on there. So it's it, immediately I'm kind of like, all right, you know, I, I'm kind of into it. So it starts out here, Den Number no. 6 by Fantagore Press, a copyright 1989, Richard Corbin, Richard Corbin and Simon Revelstroke, whoever that is. Um, they got some letters printed right up front, which is, Kind of interesting. I think they would normally want to put the credits of who did, who do it, who who do it, of the credits of who does what in this up closer and bigger little tiny font written by Richard Corbin and that Simon Revelstroke, drawn and colored by Corbin. So, okay, um, you can tell this book has been through the shitter. Like, it's it looks like it's got some water damage to it. It's got some wrinkles in it. Um, and it's old, you know, it's three decades old. So it's kind of separating in port parts here, not in great shape, but
But this opening page, again, I've talked about this a lot, all the newsprint. And there's something about the way that the colors, the, the, the colors and the inks just saturate this paper, get this rich, vibrant color. I mean, it's a million miles away from something like this, like that computer coloring. And I'm, I'm not saying that it's a negative, but if given the opportunity to have something colored, if I was given a choice, this is beautiful, but there's something about this that just looks so much more interesting, but it's old newsprint, old coloring techniques, old printing techniques, of which I know nothing about how it was done. But um, so the colors and then the drawing, I kind of wish this fucking text box was like up here in the dark and leaving the illustration space just free of obstruction. It looks very clear to me as if done with reference. It's too accurate with the shadows. I'm, I'm going to assume he found reference or set up models to like some dude laying on the ground, some girl, and then in you know dark room, extreme lighting, some kind of soft pad they're lying on. It looks amazing, honestly, from artistic perspective, the figure work and then the coloring. And it's, you know, colored by Corbett. So again, how does he do this? If you know, please tell me. This opening splash page is amazing to me. If you can kind of see, they kind of didn't do great with this text down here. It's like a copyright, but it's hard to read. But I started out with like, holy shit, if every page in here looks like this, then... Good Lord. And it kind of is. It it gets into some more obscure cartoony shit that is less interesting to me. There's more of the same. Looks like just more shots from the same photo shoot. I, I'm guessing with their anatomy, guy and a girl. Some guy appears on a glowing orb for them to talk to. More of that kind of great referenced lighting going on there. I mean, it's just, it's too accurate. I'm not one to talk about how good or bad lettering is, but this is, I mean, it's its okay, but it's not great. There's some really wobbly things going on through here. And then, I don't know, if they're underwater, some kind of a submarine going through the, this underwater area up into a cave. Very crazy, intense lighting going on. I like this, this submarine or whatever coming out of a dark cave. It's got these lights on, so we got this light up of where the lights are projecting. And then again, the coloring and the way the colors work on this newsprint, just really vibrant, interesting stuff. I got, I'm just looking at the lettering, how there's so much space in between. I want, they must've had, I don't know how they did it. I, I'm gonna assume this is not lettered by hand. It could be, I don't fucking know. What, what do I know? But anyway, they're, they're in their submarine. They come. As there's so many interesting panels, and as a negative for the printing techniques, like some of the panels, this this there's some artwork that gets kind of lost that you can't see, or it's kind of hard to see. It looks pretty damn amazing. Like their heads popping up out of this water as they're floating there, and then you see the reflections of their heads below. And then this panel, I'd be fascinated to see what these look like originally. But there are some points where this old printing technique on this newsprint doesn't help the art. And in some places where it absolutely does, it's kind of interesting. Another well-lit shot there with the torch going around into this, some kind of ruins that they're walking through. Is there like a monster coming out of the dark? That is a monster of some type. Is that the th creature on the front? Sort of. I guess it is. Um, the heroic guy like stabs it in the brains and another very dark panel. Like this is just a side shot of them running through the dark. I bet you can't see it from there. If I bring it closer, it looks like, you know, they're running. The only lighting in the whole panel is just these torches that they're carrying. So very limited illumination. Come into another room, a bunch of candles lit up on this, like, I don't know, like this raised area. I don't know what's going on. And then you get this really weird cartoony looking creature or this guy. So it's it's suddenly very different. Like the artwork from here, from this, it's very different. And again, I don't know anything about 
what this book was about, who published it, why they published it. It kind of has got like a heavy metal vibe to me. Like some half-naked guy and girl running around, running into monsters, getting into fucked up situations. Isn't that like heavy metal to a T? So more very interesting artwork, but it's very different. It's less reliant on the coloring and a little bit more texturing with the ink. It looks like to me, weird cartoony guy going on here. I just, I have no idea what's going on, but. So again, I, I was getting, I was getting less impressed with the artwork as we go in. Every time he draws this guy and that face, it's really well done. This like, again, looks like reference. And this thing looks like he's just pulling it from his mind, which is fine. I just, I don't know. It's just a very talented guy, obviously. Another great shot, well lit, referenced. So well done. And these dark colors and there's this dark area, there's a cave. More darkly lit stuff, textures and the moodiness of it. It's very evocative. I, I wish I could see what this thing looked like when it was printed fresh, like off the, the printer. I mean, again, it's so old. And I wonder if the colors have faded or if the original ones would look basically the same. More great lighting. It's a great back shot with the anatomy. So just a really weird book. Again, I would just die if I could see these in like the originals. I've never bothered to, I've never like Googled his name now that I think about it because I know so little about Richard Corbin, but it makes me want to like, like go do an image search online for what his work is like and then see what's, what kind of the black and white stuff I could kind of come across and what it looks like be really interesting to see that interesting panel layouts man this guy's got a freaking giant old package that's funny it's pointing right at us um more like reference lighting so the the girl for some reason i think she's topless and she's got giant knockers which you know if i'm drawing a comic the girls are always going to have that attribute because why not and then there's just this last page where it's like then suddenly like the super detailed coloring comes back and the rendering like kind of like the first page the artwork here kind of matches this last page here um i mean i don't know what's going on with juggernauts there but the coloring in the background just some really lush vibrant coloring really crazy and that's the end of that story i mean Again, I'm just looking at it for the artwork. I'm not telling you anything about what actually happened. I don't know. I don't care. The follow-up story, Hunter, written and drawn by Bruce Jones and then colored by Corbin. So that should be interesting. I mean, I would think. It's good artwork, obviously. A little bit less kind of moody and evocative than Corbin's own stuff. It's certainly fine. Coloring is there. Look at the coloring going on through this. That's fantastic. Is it watercolors? It looks like very heavily referenced again. That looks very much referenced. All of these shots do. And then some kind of cartoony backup story. Um, <laughs> very different. And what I do like are these Richard Corbin art prints. Now these things look amazing. I would love to have any of those. That would be fantastic. And look at the covers of these books. So this is book six, it said. So that's book one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, that, the one we're looking at right there. All of these covers look amazing. And they were only two bucks to buy. And then 65 cents each for postage. Um, man, have times changed with uh, inflation and all that shit. Uh, more letters pages kind of continuing here. And then more art prints. Some wild artwork. So, again, I don't have much to say. It's just the only book I've ever had with Richard Corbin's work. And I just, we had to look at it. You know, it's, um, I'd, I'd be interested in any kind of uh, recommendations of something else of his to look up. See if, if I, you know, maybe I can go look and find something. And uh, what should I look up of his work that is relevant and regarded as some of the best stuff? Because um, I'm, I'm interested. I want to know more. 
I definitely want to know more. But that's all I've got for now on this one. Not a, not a long one. Not much for me to say. It's all I've got. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it so much, and I'll see you on the next one.